So the topic back with another video. I'm Strange Wayne. Today we are reviewing Boys in the Band. Let's get down to the brass tacks. I gave the film eight out of ten wangs. Why? 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 Because Joe Manatello, he does a terrific job as a director, taking all these pieces he wants to create the puzzle of the film Boys in the Band. You know, the story is is a good story. Why is it a good story? Because you can have a two, whatever the runtime is, hour film, and all it is is nine people in an apartment. Well, that's a feat for sure, because most time it gets pretty boring. But this film, I'm not going to say it doesn't, but it takes a lot for the film to get boring. That's a fact. Jim Parson, this is his apartment. He's, I guess you'd say, the main star of the movie. And he plays it terrific, like everyone else does in the film too. But he's really the he's the person you like leave off with. You spend the most time with that person. So, and he's a lot of cause of the problems towards the end of the film, especially because he doesn't drink much anymore. And it's a birthday party, so he's drinking quite a bit. And having him and as the starring role, probably the biggest face of the film as well, because Big Bang Theory. He said Bazinga, sold a lot of t-shirts. So you have him playing something totally different from what he did in Big Bang Theory and the other films I've seen him play in. So that was good. And he killed it. His problem is he is struggling with religion and his homosexuality, whether he wants to be gay, he doesn't want to be gay, he hates himself. He says that then towards, towards the end of the film. And it's just like, that you're stepping into his shoes but there's not other gay guys so you're stepping in all these shoes feeling their emotions understanding them as a person and to that i think that's terrific because the film does a very good job in the beginning of setting up these characters just like their interests uh how they're going to act towards it the rest of the film sets them up perfectly and that just shows how good the writing is in the film they'll set nine characters up in three minutes i mean that's just Incredible. another thing about the story and the writing i really enjoyed is unlike 12 a film like 12 angry men where it's like boom all 12 guys in this room you get to know them throughout the film and they grow later on they you see their arcs very clearly in the film in this case you have a couple characters they come in halfway. So it's a group of seven. We're learning about them, the tension. We see the, these stories building. Boom, someone else comes in, builds a little bit more. You learn their story. And every time someone comes in, until all nine of them are there, you're getting new stories. You're getting new plot developments. You get new chemistry developing on the film, new conversations because this person's in. So the writing of the film is, like I said, it's incredible. And that's just a very good script. Anything that can keep you almost invested the entire time is good. But he didn't want room, so I'm going to say it's fucking great. Wow. Something else I thought was very great in the film is the acting because you have nine different gay guys and nine different stories that each man tells. Like one guy, he's in the closet. One guy, he's super flamboyant. Like I said, Jim Parsons, he, he hates that he's gay. He grew up very Southern. And he tells that throughout the film a lot. One guy's very insecure of his looks. One guy doesn't want to be tied down. The other guy is bisexual, but he does want to be tied down with a gay guy and is willing to leave his wife if he hasn't already, you know? So you have all these different actors playing different types of gays. And unless you live on a rock, you know a gay person. Not all gay people act the same. So from that, I think it was incredible because some people are like, all right, you know they're gay. But other people, they didn't play it like that. And that's very good because if they were to play it like that, the film would have been insulting. <laughs> and you would have got the same nine characters. That's not entertaining at all. And that's not going to make for a good film. So to have these nine actors play nine different roles and to play them pretty respectfully to all the gay people I know and pretty close. I know Jim Parson, he is homosexual. So obviously some people know better than others, but... All the acting is great. Yay! 
see a film like this is very hard because it is set in one room that when you get to a certain point of where the tension builds up and blows off and you have nine characters so you have to like include all these characters within the tension or write them out the tension somehow it's very difficult to do and i feel like when it came to that point of the film it wasn't paced very well and it you felt the runtime and watching a movie you never want to feel the runtime and this film i thought was too long for its own good towards the end especially when the tension did happen because it's like there was enough time to breathe that i was just like all right you know you're losing me i need to get back into this film hit me with something else or restart reunite a new point in your argument to get me back invested into the film and it didn't do that i got a problem with that something else that i thought could have been done better is something that's been in film for decades and upon since, since the beginning of film is the shots let the shots work for you and he doesn't do that in this film which sucks because you look at something like the godfather the <laughs> The, the first one, you know, the most famous scene is a fucking door shutting. And you're letting the... Because this film is full of dialogues. It's the best script of the year. Huh? No. -uh. Bottom line, brass tacks right now is the best script of the year. Yeah, you're probably right. You make the shots work for you to tell your story. And this film is lacking that. And that was very disappointing. Because even something like 12 Angry Men, you see that in there a bit. And you see him letting the camera work for him instead of having the story do all the work so that could have definitely been better but overall like i said best script of the year that there's impressive with a bunch of incredible performances and it's just overall a good movie and who 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 watches good movies people should so the audience for this film is for everybody you know obviously it's not going to hit everyone we live in a very strange time in america where this film not a lot of, i'm not gonna say not a lot of people but a majority of people aren't going to want to watch this film which is disappointing because it's all the preaching is doing and understanding of these characters of the gay community you know is preached to itself it sucks but it does have that thought provoking uh subject matter in it which is a plus because movies with a purpose I'm always here for I don't care what the subject matter is. I want to watch it because I'm not that ignorant of a human being. So, overall, I thought this was a very good film, but it could have been better. Most films could have been better, too. But those were my points why I thought it could have been better. So, if you agree with those points or disagree, tell me down below in the comments section. Scroll back up. Hit the like button. Share the video. And subscribe.